We have eternity in our hearts. This is from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 11 through 22. Every single human being has a sense of wonder. This is to say we have a yearning to know and learn things. No one can doubt the greatness of God's creation. The unbeliever can rationalize that the entire universe is but an accident. Yet dare not say that they cannot see the beauty that is found in this universe, in this world. And yet as I say this, this greatness, this beauty that man sees with his own eyes is but a glimpse of God's greatness and his perfection. This is a fallen world. We can only see beauty that is clouded by sin. We as finite individuals cannot fathom the wonders of God because we are just that, mortal beings, incapable of understanding and knowing God. Scripture tells us that we are made in God's image. Sin has taken away our close relationship with our Creator. Sin is the wall, the obstacle that keeps man from God. Solomon tells us in these verses, since we have eternity in our hearts, given to us by God, we can never be wholly satisfied with the pleasures and activities of this world. We are spiritually thirsting. We have eternal value and nothing will satisf satisfy us except God. God has put within us that thirst, yet that yearning for the perfect world that is only found in him. This is that glimpse of perfection we see in his creative work of the world and the universe. All we can see is that glimpse. In this world, we will never understand everything that God has for us. And this is why we need to trust in him. Only he knows where we came from and what path we take in life. We should also live a life with joy and with a sense of goodness as best as we can. All things come from God. And we need to understand that real pleasures, real joy comes from him and not in material things of the world. The world as a whole does just the opposite from what Solomon writes in verse 14. He says, For God has so worked that men should fear him. Since we are his creative work, we need to fear God. This is the real purpose of living. To fear God means to respect and stand in awe of him because he is the almighty God, creator of all things. Our purpose comes from God, that we have a relationship from him and with him through his son, Jesus Christ. It is not what we know or how good we are. God has to be first in your life. Only then can you live, can we live our life for the purpose. As we look at the world, no one can say there is always justice and there is always righteousness. Injustice and wickedness happens everywhere and every day. Actually, this is normal because this is a fallen world. What would be out of place would be justice and righteousness being practiced everywhere and every day. Since this is how the world works, how can God's plan and purpose be perfect? Since there is injustice and wickedness running rampant throughout the world. God knows that there is hatred, there is wickedness, there is immorality, 
there is injustice and wickedness. He sees it everywhere. He does not mean he does not care or is turning away from it. It means that it is not the time to bring all of this to an end yet. There will be a time for judgment. This is God's appointed time. It is not our time. Every single human being will be judged, both the righteous and the wicked. All our deeds and words will be on display, both the good and the bad. In a way, God is being merciful to the sinful man. It is mercy because God is giving the lost sinner the opportunity to change from his or her wicked ways. Some will. But most will not, will not, and so on the appointed time, God will judge mankind. No one will have an excuse as to why they did not receive Christ as their Lord and Savior of their life. Like animals, mankind has a body that decays, ages, and will eventually die. However, Unlike the beasts of the field, we were created in the image of God. We have a spirit. God also has put into us the hope of eternity, and we will face judgment at God's appointed time. This means that mankind has a purpose in God's plan. We cannot understand this purpose by ourselves. Only by building a relationship with God and seeking out his guidance can we have a much fuller relationship with God. Life is a gift from our creator. We need to live our life with joy and celebration, even in this fallen world. And most importantly, Live your life with the purpose that God wants you to live. This means we live a life in awe of the one who created all things. God has set eternity on our hearts. This means we have the, the will or the knowledge to, that there is something much bigger than us. Much bigger than ourselves. God has created us in his image. He has, again, given us a spirit. He has given us a yearning heart to seek out knowledge. What we must not do is seeking out things of the world, seeking out knowledge just to gain it. The world is a fallen world. And in this fallen world, there is pain and sorrow, wickedness, sin, and injustice. Well, yet as you, as the believer in Jesus Christ, we can continue to walk in the wor this world because we put our trust in our Creator, in our God. This is not our world. We do not belong to this world. We strive, we yearn to be with our Lord. We strive and yearn to learn more of him through his word. And as we grow as his servant and as his child in our faith. And as we pass on th that relationship to all those around us, to being the image of Christ to the world. We continually foster his love. For the world, even in its fallen state. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that again, as you continually open our eyes to your grace and mercy. Your grace is sufficient. Your mercy is sufficient to cover all. All that men need to do is turn from sin and come to you. Receive you as their God and Lord. 
renouncing the old life they used to live and come before you, Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.